This is one of multiple videos discussing SDN, network programmability, network automation, overlays and related technologies. I watched a presentation last night by Martin Casado, one of the sort of fathers of SDN, and he was talking about his experience as he went from starting and writing OpenFlow at Stanford to selling his company Nasera to VMware and what's what he's learned over time. And what's interesting is he says at the end of the day, the virtual network is, is what he thinks is the most successful implementation of sort of SDN. So if you wanna have a look at that, the presentation, sorry, is on, is on YouTube. So I spoke about the Open Networking Summit. So this is the 2017 one. So if you're interested to hear someone's take of, of SDN and these were the guys that you know did a lot of the initial work. This it's about twenty five minutes, so it's an interesting presentation. So he talks about how they would were, were thinking about the separation of the control plane and data plane, kind of like what OpenFlow is supposed to do, and then how they changed that. So they decided that perhaps that wasn't the the best way to go, and then they eventually went, if you look in his presentation, to a virtual network. So they changed sort of their viewpoint of, of a whole bunch of things and eventually ended up with the VMware sort of product where we have virtual networks. And then he shows the money that was made by selling NSX to the market and how it's hit in 2016 a billion dollar run rate. So this is one of the most successful products out there. So Martin Casada, who's now a VC, but obviously he was pitching Nasira to VCs. This is what happened when VMware bought the product, uh, bought Nasira. They're selling a lot of a lot of this product, so billion dollar run rate. But he, in this presentation, he talks about the original intention of of SDN and how they wanted to move from separation of control plane and data plane and then have a central network operating system. And then in the end, they moved to a virtual network. So that's where they ended up. So it's interesting from someone who was deeply involved in this, how their perspective changed and how they went from like pure open flow to a virtual network that doesn't even necessarily use open flow. So if you're interested in sort of seeing someone's perspective about that, there you go. There are still competing viewpoints of the right way to go. What we're going to talk about now is OpenFlow. And you can get details of that at the ONF's website. So Open Networking Foundation. Okay, so let's jump into OpenFlow. On the ONF website, if you go to SDN Resources, ONF Technical Library, you'll find the documentation. Now there's nothing more exciting than reading RFCs and reading these kind of documents, especially if you have problems sleeping at night. But actually these aren't too bad. So a lot of controllers today still only support OpenFlow 1.3. So you'll see the Y protocol is set to 0x04. That's a protocol that you, would, that you would see if you did a Wireshark capture. The latest specification is 1.5. So Rehu, as a controller, as an example, supports this, whereas other controllers don't. So you just need to look at, at the specification that relates to your controller and your network devices. The controller and the network devices negotiate to use a version of OpenFlow. So starting at the beginning of this document, once again, we have an open flow switch, which could be a virtual switch or could be a physical switch. A switch has an open flow pipeline, which consists of either one or multiple tables. So open V switch as an example, or mini net supports 254 tables, but other devices, so other physical devices may only support one table. This is vendor dependent. OpenFlow specification is very much open to interpretation. So you only need one table to be compliant, one or more flow tables. And they perform packet lookups and forwarding. In other words, they will match something 
and then do something with it. So match this forward out of this port. The switch runs an open flow agent and sets up an open flow channel to the controller. In open flow terminology, this is called an open flow port or controller port. So when we send traffic to the controller port or the controller, we are essentially using this channel, which is negotiated using OpenFlow to an external controller. This is the GUI of Open Daylight. You'll notice it's not necessarily that pretty. I had a problem where my mini net was broken, so I had to download a new mini net and get that working, and that's what I've done here. So what I'll do is get my local mini net. This mini net VM is running on my local PC. The controller is running on a separate PC, both running in VirtualBox. So what I'll do is copy a mini net command into this. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to set up a session to the ODL controller. So once I press enter here, we should see that we have a network established on ODL. I'll do a ping all. And let's see if it actually works. Okay, so there you go. We've got one PC, four OpenFlow switches, and there's our topology. So four OpenFlow switches, PCs connected to those OpenFlow switches. So we can see the IP address of the PC. We can see details of this OpenFlow switch. If we go to nodes, make this a bit bigger. We can see that there are four OpenFlow switches, OpenFlow switch one, two, three, and four. We can see the node connectors. So these are the interfaces on that switch. We've got port one, port two, and a local management interface. And if we look at another switch, let's say switch three, we've got Ethernet 1, Ethernet 2, Ethernet 3, and a local management interface. Notice here we've got 254 tables on the switch. It's not displayed very nicely in the ODL GUI here at all. That's showing you what the OpenFlow table looks like. What I'd like to point out here is we have got an OpenFlow topology that was learnt because the switch is connected to the OpenFlow controller. Cisco have a open source product that can run on the Open Daylight controller. So if you do a search in Google, as an example, for the Cisco Open Daylight OpenFlow app, and basically what it is is an application written by Cisco that uses the RESTConf API to talk to Open Daylight on the northbound interface. And then on the southbound interface, we've got OpenFlow that writes rules to switches. But let's go back to the theory. So we've got our OpenFlow controller using the OpenFlow protocol to write flows to the OpenFlow tables of switches. So the switch and the controller communicate using the OpenFlow protocol. The OpenFlow protocol is used to add, update, and delete flow entries in flow tables, both reactively and proactively. So remember, a proactive flow is a flow entry that is written before the traffic arrives, whereas a reactive flow entry is written after traffic arrives. Traffic is sent to the controller, and then the controller decides what to do. What's well, actually the applications on the controller decides what to do based on the packet that was received. A flow table has a list of flow entries, which consist of match fields. So we're matching some kind of traffic. Then we have counters and a set of instructions to apply to the packets. So in other words, we would match, say, ICMP. We'd have a counter to count up how many packets have matched. And then an instruction would say, OK, so we've matching ICMP, send it out of port 2, or send it to the controller. In other words, do something with the traffic. So as an example, matching starts at the first table. The first table is always table zero, and then may, not always, but may continue to additional tables. Flow entries are matched in priority order. In other words, we start at the most, well, the highest priority, and then it works down looking for a match. I just want to point out a few things in this document for the real world. Once again, notice we've got OpenFlow 1.3 and 1.5. 1.3 
only matches ingress traffic. But in later releases like OpenFlow 1.5, you can match ingress and egress traffic out of a switch. So notice this picture is very different to the previous picture. If I go back here, this picture is only matching ingress traffic on a port, not egress. Whereas here we're matching ingress and egress. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.